Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and today we are going to be taking a look at the opening to Fallout 2. I've already done Fallout 76 and the original Fallout, so if you want, you can look those up on the channel. Um... I will not be including um, any of the soundtrack or any uh, music or anything, so just I don't want to try to deal with all the headache that copyright adds, so anyway. We are talking about Fallout 2. Uh, note, I am getting fatter. I've got to get back on a diet. Do something. My poor Fallout shirt barely fit. But. As always, I do have my notebook. Anyway, let's kind of get into this. Um, Fallout 2, uh, the game was developed by Black Isle Studios under the Interplay banner. Black Isle was a division within Interplay Studios. Uh, many of the people who formed Black Isle went on to work for Obsidian with Fallout New Vegas, making an interesting transition. Plus, many of those who became Black Isle Studios as part of Interplay worked under the work just as part of Interplay on the original Fallout. So, these are people who really know the lore. Now, much like um, the original Fallout, the game opens with the actual Interplay logo. So, you have the jet going around the planet. Ba, ba, ba. For gamers, by gamers, interplay. Now, uh, this is followed by the Black Owl logo. As I said, Black Owl was a division of uh, interplay games. Um. But this, this begins um, the th theme song for Fallout 2, which opens as we see a, almost a briefing room where a film starts flickering. But the film, but the song is a kiss, a kiss to build a dream on. And it's in Louis Armstrong's distinctive voice. Um, you might also know Louis Armstrong for songs like I see skies of blue Trees of green <laughs> So yeah. The, his, his voice is very distinct when it comes to jazz. And uh, this one, you can hear his distinctive vocals. Um, so, 
but anyway, as I said, um, it, it's kind of in a briefing room, and you see um, almost military briefing room, and you see the film start um, playing and flickering. <laughs> And you see that it's actually a film, while Louis Armstrong's song plays, you see it's actually a film by vault Tech with instructions for leaving the vault. And, um, it does show a goofier... Um, just more fun-loving side of the makers of the Fallout games in this one. You know, you can see it in, in the video. They just, the way they kind of poke fun at everything. It's not to say they're not serious, but you, you can see the willingness to joke a little more. Than was existed in Fallout 1. Fallout 1 still had its own jokes. But Fallout 2 seemed to have a little more of a willingness not to try to take itself so seriously. Um, now, the all it is is just simple rules starting out. And then it introduces you to one of the main points of Fallout 2. The Gek. The Garden of Eden Creation Kit. Which is meant to help terraform the land, make it more habitable. While terraforming is possible, it's only usually on a small scale, not on these grand scales. In science fiction, you often hear about traveling to Mars and terraforming the planet. But of course, we don't have that technology. At least not yet. Even NASA admits, as of right now, we don't have the technology for planet-wide terraforming. So, even terraforming whole towns, I don't know if we even have that capability. So, although we do have the capability within uh, small scale and uh, controlled environments to do it on, like I said, on a small scale. And just the cost to do it on larger scales would be immense, so. But anyway, one of the primary premises of Fallout 2 is the Gek. Now, with the end of the film, the song comes to an end as, <clears throat> end as well. And we see the opening of the vault doors. <coughs> Excuse me, which I believe are supposed to represent Vault 13, the vault we came from in the original Fallout. 
Now, um, the vault's um, inhabitants are mowed down by um, men in power armor. They're not in T-45. They're not in T-51. They are in a new kind of power armor. XO-1. Which at the time was just... You know... Theoretical. They, they weren't being used before the war. They were only a theoretical design. Now, that of course, though, means we have seen the introduction of the Enclave. And as I said, they mow down the vault's inhabitants. This cues a voice that we're familiar with if you listen to the original Fallout's opening. It's a monologue given by Ron Perlman. And the speech goes as follows. War. War never changes. The end of the world occurred pretty much as we had predicted. Too many humans, not enough space or resources to go around. The details are trivial and pointless. The reasons, as always, purely human ones. The earth was nearly wiped clean of life. A great cleansing an atomic spark struck by human hands quickly raged out of control. Spears of nuclear fire ra rained from the skies. So, we have a look at the world ending as we had pretty much thought to give exact histories they say not really necessary the point is it was for human reasons and so there was an atomic volley unleashed upon the earth as he said an atomic spark <sighs> struck by human hands that quickly raged out of control and as we know from the speech from the first fallout there was a volley from the different countries. We don't know who, who, ex who shot first, but there was an exchanging of <clears throat> atomic weapons. Missiles cast down. As he says here, spears of nuclear fire rain from the skies you know in other words the atomic missiles hitting the ground with such impact and regularity and causing the atomic mushroom cloud effects and the devastating 
uh, after effect. Continents were swallowed in flames and fell beneath the boiling oceans. Many, there, there is a little speculation that maybe this meant an actual um, sinking of a continent or two into the Earth's oceans. Because as we know, the Earth is 70% water, so it's possible. Um, however, um, it could just indicate something we know did happen, a reshaping of the land. Some of it may have fell into the waters, while others changed their, topo their topography drastically. So... Humanity was almost extinguished. Their spirits becoming part of the background radiation that blanketed the earth. And so, even though man was not fully um, removed from the earth. Um, it was still an event that brought their effects upon the surface of the earth to nothing greater than the radiation that already lay upon the ground and was falling to the ground. A quiet darkness fell across the planet, lasting many years. Few survived the devastation. So, we know um, a lot changed, and a quiet darkness could mean an intellectual, a technological, a literal darkness because there is theory that it would produce. Uh, throw such clouds into the air that it would block out a lot of the sunlight, at least for a while. Or maybe it was a combination of all. But yeah, it could be intellectual, it could be technological, scientific. I mean, we know after the fall of the Western Roman Empire, Europe kind of fell into what is called the Dark Ages, which lasted about a thousand years after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Few survived the devastation. Some 
had been fortunate enough to reach safety, taking shelter in great underground vaults. When the great darkness passed, these vaults opened and their inhabitants emerged to begin their lives again. So, the few out in the open survived, but the, those who did survive, many survived in the vault. And when they were to emerge, it was a chance to restart civilization. One of the northern tribes claims they are descended from one such vault. They hold that their founder and ancestor, one known as the Vault Dweller, alone saved the world from a great evil. According to their legend, this evil arose in the far south. So, We've kind of went over the backstory of the Earth, the Great War, and now we're kind of recounting the events of Fallout 1, which do tie into Fallout 2. And of course, the protagonist of Fallout 1 is the Vault Dweller. Um, and as a Vault... Um, as we will see, he ends up founding the home of Fallout 2's protagonist. The Chosen One. But this great evil. Far to the south. You have to remember. Fallout 2. Begins. Further north. In the southern part of Oregon. While Fallout 1. Mainly covered southern California. To middle California. And the Mariposa military base. Um, was about in the middle of the state. So it would be far to the south, according to Fallout 2. It is, it corrupt, corrupted all it touched. Twisting men inside, turning them into beasts. And so, here's kind of a reference to the FEV. It turned literal men into mutants and some into beasts, centaurs. So really changing their shape or corrupting them. Only through the bravery of this vault dweller was the evil destroyed. But in so doing, he lost many of his friends and suffered greatly, sacrificing much of his, much of himself to save the world. 
So in this, we know he does lose friends, and he did sacrifice a lot. We know that Ian, according to canonical lore, dies, and the Vault Dweller had to end up being kicked out of the Vault and banished from it. Uh, so, according to the canonical lore. When at last he returned to the home he had fought so hard to protect, he was cast out, exiled. In confronting that which he f they feared, he had become something else in their eyes, and no longer their champion. So again, as I say, he does end up being cast out. So... That's what we know based upon the canonical lore happens to the Vault Dweller. He ends up being cast out of the Vault after defeating the Master and his plot of using the FEV Vaults or the FEV Vats to transform people into mutants. Forsaken by his people, he strode into the wasteland. He traveled far to the north until he came to a, the Great Canyons. So, like I said, he traveled further north. From about middle California, he went up into northern California. And into... Southern Oregon. There, he founded a small village, Arroyo, where he lived out the rest of his years. And so, for a generation since its founding, Arroyo has lived in peace, its canyon sheltering it from the outside world. It is home. Your home. So now we've set the story. We know were from Arroyo, the same village the Vault Dweller founded. And we know it's usually a safe place. But the years left by the war have not yet healed, and the earth has not forgotten. And that is the speech Ron Perlman gives. And your character in Fallout 2 is sent forth. Now, while Perlman is giving this introduction monologue, introduction speech, there are a number of images. I can't find where they're exactly from. Maybe if I knew how to do a reverse Google search, I could probably find it. But I suck at that. So... I just described the images. 
So let's let's kind of look at that. While the speech is giving, you do see a number of images. The first image you see is of three people working at early era computers. And of course, it's a black and white photo. So based on the look of it, I would imagine 1950s, especially since that is... A big portion of the fallout fill uh, the fallout lifeblood if you will it is followed now that image is followed by an image of a cityscape and it has a large Vault-Tec billboard that you can see. Really giving us Im um, importance on the idea of who Vault-Tec was. So yeah. Next is a war propaganda poster. In it, you see a burnout car, and it says, I think, keep them firing, if I remember right. Just kind of saying, we have to keep fighting, we have to keep going. And so it's just a propaganda poster to strengthen the war effort. Then we see an image of a nuclear detonation and the resulting mushroom cloud. So <coughs> it almost tells a story. You have the people at the computers, and you see the city, but then, you know, um, we see the war propaganda posters pushing the idea of war, and then the next thing we see, boom, there's a mushroom cloud. War has happened. And the next thing that happens during a mushroom cloud? Well, in the 1950s, we were pushed into a technique called duck and cover. And that's what the next image is. Um... The image, it's an image of the infamous duck and cover tactic, and you see a kid under a desk with their coat over their head because that's the one of the drills they were taught to duck, get under the desk, and cover as if that's really going to protect you from a nuclear blast. But we see. You know, the push for war, the bomb drop, the duck and cover. Now, like I said, just like telling a story, the next image we see is the destruction wrought in the wake of the bomb. Um... The story and the images then transfer to the story of the vaults. So, first we have the story of the world in general. People at the computers. Then you have 
the cities, the bomb drops, and you have the people ducking, covering, and you have the devastation. It, 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 it completely wipes things out. But then we see the vaults. And again, I suppose it's meant to kind of be Vault 13. You, you kind of see it in the process of opening. Now, <clears throat> um, the next thing we see um, After we see the vault entrance, we see, we do see the vault suit of the first game's protagonist hung up in kind of an honored manner. They follow that up um, with one of the master's experiments at Mariposa. An actual subject being ready to be dipped into the FEV. He's already wrapped and he's getting ready to be dipped into the FEV. And then we see a close up of a mutant. And it, that's followed by the image of the vault dweller wandering into the waste. So. We see the world, and then we see the opening of Vault 13, the effects of the FEV, and then the Vault Dweller wandering back out into the waste. And finally, we see the canyons that Perlman mentions uh, traveled by the Vault Dweller to the north. And then the actual bridge that would lead into Arroyo. And that is the opening of Fallout 2. Ah, uh, so I do want to thank you all for watching. I hope you kind of enjoyed. Um, there's not near as much historical and scientific context to this intro as there was with Fallout 1, so. But, that's alright. Still a good one to look at. Uh, eventually, I will get around to Fallout 3, New Vegas, and 4. <clears throat> but, as always, even though I don't yet have a sign-up, I will have it soon. I finally got it from my old room, and um, I just need to smooth out the corners and stuff, make it look a little better. Educate thyself. Think, read, study, learn. Uh, I'll see you all again in the next video. But until then, later.